Hello, everyone. I'm Yong Chunchen. I'm going to present the paper "Automatic Language Identification Using Deep Neural Networks." This paper was published in 2014, and the authors are shown below. This is the outline of my presentation. There are three parts in all: introduction, contents, and summarization. Let's go for the first part, introduction. The background of this paper is: before using deep neural networks, many popular automatic language identification systems still include or rely on acoustic modeling based on eye vectors. But guided by the success of DNS for acoustic modeling, the authors wanted to explore the capability of DNS on RID and improve this process. And the approach they used was to compare the proposed DNS architectures to several state-of-the-art acoustic systems based on eye vectors. They selected six systems based on eye vectors as reference objects, and then compared and analyzed their performance on two different datasets. The first one is Google 5M RID Corps, and the other one is NIST LRE 2009. Next, the second part is contents. Here, I want to explain two important concepts. The first one is what's the automatic language identification, short for LID. LID is when machines or systems receive a segment of audio by speakers, they will detect and recognize which language this is. And collect or analyze it. RID is used very often in our daily life by some applications. Among them, I think the Google Dictation Translation System is a very good example. It hears from speakers and then translates the information to the languages the users want. Another important concept I want to explain is what is deep neural networks, short for DNS. A deep neural network is a neural network with a certain level of complexity, a neural network with more than two layers. So on the left, that's how DNS work. Deep neural networks use sophisticated modeling. To process data in complex ways, and DNS is very crucial for processing large amount of data. To fully understand the importance and concept of DNS, I will explain its evolution and some related research about it. So at the beginning, we only had artificial intelligence, and then the machine learning came out and got developed. After that,、uh, we got the artificial neural networks, and today、uh, we have the deep neural networks. The biggest difference between the artificial neural networks and deep neural networks is that the AN only uses one hidden layer, but DN must include at least two hidden layers.、Uh, this is why DNs are able to handle more complex data structures and. Process large amounts of data. The figure on the left can explain this very well.、Uh, like I said before, two or more hidden layers comprise a deep neural network. So in this paper, the authors use this to de-、uh, develop a DNN architecture. They use a specific feature as the input layer, and after several hidden layers. They set the output layer, which consists of many languages and OS. So therefore, we can figure out the total weight、uh, in this topology、um, by this、um, by this algorithm. Apart from this,、uh, the authors used two performance metrics for the、uh, for comparing the results. The first one is average cost. Average cost is a mirror of cost of taking bad decisions. 
and therefore it considers not only discrimination but also the ability of setting optimal threshold. Second one is the equal error rate. So the ER used in this paper is to show the performance when considering only scores of each individual language. So the last part is summarization. Uh, let's say the three figures or tables uh, of the result in this paper. This figure is a uh, cost average result on Google 5M LID Corps dataset. From this bar chart, we can see clearly about the performance of eight hidden layer DNN vs reference system based on I vectors. So this black bar showed the performance of DNN. And the other gray ones are uh, all for the I vectors based systems. So we can get a conclusion that the eight hidden layer DNN performs best and improves around 70% than the i vectors based systems. This is the second result graph. So in this part of experiment, the authors counted the error rate that the three different systems made when dealing with a given language. Um, so we can also say clearly that Eight hidden layer DNN is the best, and the next is the two hidden layer DNN. And after them, the I vectors based system is the worst. What we need to notice is that the test time for the three systems were all 200 hours. But the DNNs also have some drawbacks. From this line chart, we can see that as test time increased, the DNNs performed better. But at the beginning, DNNs were worse than the vectors based systems. So we get a conclusion that DNNs perform better only when there are much test time. Or we can say DNN is more suitable for processing large amounts of data. As for the relation of this paper with our lecture, I want to say that the automatic language identification is very related to our um, lecture topic, the language identification. It offers us an automatic way for the language identification. So in this way, um, we can gather audio information or data more efficiently. Apart from this, the DNS offers us a solution for processing large amounts of data, uh, like what we learned before, the big data. As for the pros and cons, I think the authors did very well in processing adequate reference experiments, and they gave us a detailed experimental procedure explanation, also some illustrated and complete results analysis. For example, they also admitted the inadequacy of DNN when dealing with small amounts of data. But I think they would do better if they um, give us enough explanation on original data size and give more sufficient elaboration on adjusted regression calibrating. At last, this is a reference I use, including the original uh, given paper and others. Thanks for your watching.